holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Today, we are on the first Sunday after the Pentecost, and as we worship, we shall be worshiping under the theme, God, the Holy Trinity. Before we move forward, further, let us sing the first hymn in Cathedral Praise, song number 187, Holy, Holy, Holy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are grateful to you for this day that you have given to us that, that we could be able to come together as one to worship you, dear Lord. Lord. Lord, we also want to thank you for the previous week that you have kept us healthy and alive, dear Lord, and all the blessing that we received from your hands. And since this is the day that you have kept for us that we could be able to again worship you, dear Lord, it is our humble request that as we come before you, you be with us, take this worship for your glory, glory my dear Lord, and as we worship, we want to submit everything into thy caring hands so that this worship may be a channel of blessing for all those who are taking part in it. Bless us and guide us through your Holy Spirit, dear Lord, so that we could be able to learn from your word when it is being poured by your servant. In thy name we pray. Amen. Let us now have the ministry of the word. In the temple at Jerusalem, Isaiah is given a vision of the Holy One, who commissions him as a prophet. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, lift high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two, he covered his face, and with two, he covered his feet, and with two, he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, and the whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of, of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim to me, having in his hand a burning coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin forgiven. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. The responsive reading is taken from Psalm chapter 46, verses 1 to 6 and 10 to 11. Psalm chapter 46, verses 1 to 6 and 10 to 11. And your response shall be, God is our hope and strength. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be moved, and though the hills be carried into the midst of sea, though the waters thereof rage and swell, and though the mountains shake at the tempest of same, your response? There is a river, the streams whereof made glad the city of God, the holy dwelling place of the Most Highest. God is in it the midst of her, therefore shall she not be removed. God shall help her and that right early. The nations make much ado when the kingdoms are moved, but God hath showed his voice, and earth shall melt away. Your response? Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nation, and I will be exalted in earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Your response? Here ends the psalm. Paul's Trinitarian prayer to the Father 
asking that his purpose for the church may be fulfilled in Christ through the Holy Spirit. The epistle reading has taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with mighty through his spirit in the inner man, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God. Let us now sing the second hymn from Cathedral Praise, hymn number 186, three in one, and the lyrics can be found on your screen. The gospel portion for today's meditation has been taken from John chapter 6, chapter 16, verses beginning from 5 to 15. Jesus foretells the coming of the Holy Spirit, who will complete the revelation of God. Jesus said, Now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convince the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you, will see, and you will see me no more, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of the truth comes, 
He will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of Christ. It's indeed a joy to be here, back to my place, back to the place where I belong, and also to the place God has kept me. Before I uh, share with you the message for this service, I would like to thank all of you for upholding our family in your prayers uh, when all four of us went through the COVID and in my hospitalization uh, in all the time. Thank you very much for keeping us in your prayers. Thank you for bringing food for us. Some of the families uh, were kind enough to, to come forward and bring food knowing that Cherry would not have the strength to cook. Thank you, uh, Pastor Ratan Raj. Thank you, uh, Pastor Abe, for filling in my shoes. And uh, all the lay leaders, I saw Swamiji also last week, so I know. Uh, thank you, all of you, because you have put together uh, your time, energy, and also made sure that none of the worship services are stopped. Thank you for uh, confirming something that I always say. No one is indispensable in the church. The church, the worship, the services will not stop because of any one person. And thank you for doing this. Thank you, Andrew, Alvin, and the team uh, for making sure that the services were streamed on time and uh, it was done meticulously. Thank you once again, everyone, for keeping us in your prayers. I have a predicament once again for today's theme. There are three passages, prominent passages. Isaiah chapter 6 is a haven for any preacher. Who will go and whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. The basis of many, many missions. Paul's prayer, his prayer, uh, Paul's prayers have been very, very distinct in the letters and his epistles. And the third is the gospel passage from Mark chapter 1 and Jesus explaining to his, uh, sorry, from, from John 16 and Jesus explaining to his disciples what it means for his ministry. But I have to keep in theme with Holy Trinity and therefore today I have to preach a thematic message rather than an expository message. If you remember, year 2020, we had the service of the Holy Trinity right here, and I had shared to give the evidence of what Trinity is by setting up three candles and using the flames and the essence of the flames to explain that Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit have the same essence. In 2019, I had shared the same idea 
but with the illustration of water, ice, and vapor. That if you freeze the water, it becomes ice. If you boil it, it becomes the vapor. But at the same time, the chemical name or composition remains the same, H2O. And that is to explain that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit same, share the same essence, though they are manifested to humans in different time period. Well, I think twice evidence should be enough. So I'm not going to give any evidence of Holy Trinity this year, but to share how Holy Trinity has been used in our liturgy, in our creed, and in our worship. Today's collect is focused on the glory of the Father, the glory of the Son, and the glory of the Holy Spirit. How all three of them and their glory is important for us. And therefore, when we read the collect, it, it says, Almighty Father, by the incarnation of your eternal Son and by the sending of your Holy Spirit, you have revealed to us the wonderful mystery of your divine life, the mystery of three persons in one. We pray you to keep us steadfast in this faith and grant us at the last the vision of your endless glory. So the glory of the Father, the glory of the Son, and the glory of the Holy Spirit combined together to fulfill the purpose of the manifestation of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the early church, Athanasius brought out a correct teaching in his doctrine and theology, which is being followed till today by all of us the oneness of the Father and the Son, and that they are of the same substance, the same essence of divinity. When in liturgy we say, and if you remember this, we sing this, incidentally when we sing, we do not think of the words. Section five of our liturgy that we sing every Sunday says, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Inadvertently, you and I have been worshiping the Holy Trinity for as long as this liturgy and before this the other liturgies have been given to us. And we acknowledge that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are not only of the same essence, but are also of the same purpose, and the purpose is salvation. Within the creed, within the creed, all the creeds that we have from, from the early church down to today, the two major creeds are Apostles' Creed and Nicene Creed. Apostles' Creed that was formulated somewhere in the early second century, Nicene Creed in the Council of Nicaea in 323 AD, which remind us that for that long, we have been affirming our faith in the Father and in the Son and in the Holy Spirit. In the confirmation class, I make the Apostle Creed as the center of my study 
Because when you take that, it is easy to teach the students their faith, keeping the doctrine and theology intact. And that is what we do. And the third thing, third place where we use the Holy Trinity is worship. Now many a times people have argued that Trinity does not, does not occur in the, in, in the Bible. And you would be surprised to know that all over the world there are more than 2,000 institutions that have been set apart or consecrated in the name of the Holy Trinity. One name that has maximum takers rather than saying that father is important, so let me go to Jehovah Witness. Son is important, so let me go to Jesus only. Or Holy Spirit is important, so let me just become a charismatic, leaving the father and son away. More than 2,000 institutions have affirmed their faith in the Holy Trinity by naming their institutions and following the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. You and I are part of them. We may be called the Cathedral Church of Redemption, but our affirmation in our worship, in our creed, and in our liturgy makes us one of the school that believes, school of thought that believes in the Holy Trinity. Yes, the word Trinity does not occur in the Bible. While thinking about this, I was also wondering, the word pandemic does not occur in the Bible. The word Corona does not occur in the Bible. And yet for the last one year, every time that the word pandemic is mentioned and Corona is mentioned, all Christians all over have been quoting Psalm 91 to each other. You see how, how distinctive we have become. We want to choose our, for our own understanding what we like or what we dislike. So we may argue and say Trinity does not occur in the Bible, therefore we will not take it as an subject of Christianity. Yet, yet, when a virus comes in, all of us become hardcore Christians. My friends, our worship may not have the word Trinity, but our worship has the essence of the word Trinity. Just now when the psalm was read, it struck me there was a time when the psalm, the reading of psalm, was concluded with a formula. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. I know this is in Urdu. I know it is in Hindi. Is it in Tamil? It is in Tamil. Is it in Gujarati? It is in Gujarati. And I believe some of the other vernaculars will also have this formula. So we may say that we have not, we do not believe in Trinity, but for as long as the church has been in our own creeds, worship, and liturgy, we have been we have been worshiping the Holy Trinity. And when I said, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, I know many of you sitting in your homes will, fill, will, will complete it and say, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. And that is the theme today. Not just Trinity, but the glory of the Holy Trinity. There have been, and if you argue with me on the Bible, Trinity in the Bible, Revelation chapter 13, where the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are countered by the devil. In Revelation chapter 13, you will see the description of one, dragon. 
one beast and the second beast. A counterattack on the Holy Trinity. You and I may say Trinity does not exist in the Bible, but the devil knows Trinity exists in the pages of the Bible and history. And that is why in Revelation, John sees the counterattack by the devil. Dragon to the Father, the first beast to, the, to Jesus, and the second beast to the Holy Spirit. And if you still do not believe that the Holy Trinity exists, then my friends, we are difficult, it is difficult for us to then say that we are on the side of Christ or Trinity. Then the devil has already assumed us, convinced us, conditioned us to believe that there is no Father, no Son, and, the no, and no Holy Spirit. But in the end days, the devil will manifest himself as the dragon, the first beast, and the second beast. Revelation chapter 13, if you have time, please read that and you will know that the Holy Trinity exists. As it was in the beginning, is now and forever shall be world without end. May God bless the hearing of his word and receiving the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Mohit, for the challenging message. Let us now confess our faith in the words of Apostles' Creed.
shall now listen to the church notices. Friends, we start uploading the notices on the Facebook page of the Cathedral Church of Redemption from this week. And according to that, you will notice that we have the virtual services on English at 8, Tamil at 10, and Hindi at 10, 12 p.m. And for these services, as has been customary in our previous weeks, only people who are invited to participate in the worship and the technical team is expected. Uh, no public attendance, no public gathering is allowed even now. We will have the 24-hour chain prayer on the 5th of June, being the first Saturday of the month, and you can take your prayer request from Sandra in English, from Mr. Asirwadam in Tamil, and from Mr. Gill in the Hindi uh, section. As has been announced, the church has few oxygen concentrators that people can borrow, and some of you have already borrowed it, we just ask you that once you use it, you use the mask that is given with it, and when you return it, please replace the mask with a fresh one so that it can be used for somebody else. This way, you would have used the oxygen and also made it easier for us to give it to somebody else who may not have time to buy a new mask at a critical time. So please do that. When you return the concentrators, please return it with the oxygen mask. Forms for MBBS courses in CMC, Velour, and Ludhiana have been declared online, and uh, you can download these forms. For the church letter, you will need the letter of the presbyter in charge, and then you will need to get that countersigned by the bishop. So if you look at the dates, you will know when to do this, and as soon as possible, you do this so that uh, your, your applications are not delayed. We are still in the process of getting advertisements for our brochure for the 90 years, and for some reason, if you were left out, please do that. Insert your ads, insert whatever you would like to do, and. Uh, family ads, commercial ads, or whatever else you would like to bring, and make sure that these ads are useful and we will be able to generate funds from these ads. Thank you, and may God bless you. We will pray for all those who are going to celebrate their birthdays and anniversary in the coming week. K. Pakia Raj, P. Sam Robert, K. Maria Doss, E. Steve, Mridula Kosla, Mrs. and Mr. Ranjit Singh, Mrs. and Mr. Samir Williams, Mrs. and Mr. Charles Scott, Mrs. and Mr. Amit Bishan, Arnold Bertie Goodwin, Balbir Singh, Shireen Alfred, Mrs. and Mr. Mewel Babu Ravichandran, Mrs. and Mr. C.G. Williams, Shireen Luk, Jebathai Silamani, Rohan Norris, S. Chandra, S. Chandra, Aroma Sutharsan, Arun Vivek Kerkata, M. Santosh Daniel, Priscilla Nisha Samuel, Rija Matthew, Alvina, Alvina Job, Rufina Frederick, Sonia Raj, Reverend Mohit Hitter, Lavanya, Sunil Frederick, Yasholini Avaram, Gitang Shetty, Mrs. and Mr. Ajit D. Samuel Sargunar. Let us pray for these people. 
Dear Lord, we are grateful to you for the freshness that you have poured into our hearts through your inspirational word. At the same time, we are grateful to you that you have again enabled your servant that he could come before us and share from your word. Lord, we seek strength, we seek your grace upon him so that he could be able to serve you and your people in a better way in the days to come. At the same time, Lord, we are grateful to you for these people who are going to celebrate their birthdays and anniversary in the coming week. Lord, as you have kept them thus far, and you have kept them healthy and safe, it is our request before you, Lord, that you be with them in the coming year and bless their future endeavors so that they could be able to witness their, witness your glory and witness your grace upon them and their families. Be with them, Lord, and grant that they may ha have the coming year in a more blessed way so that they could learn that your greatness and your mercies and your grace shall be with them in the coming year as well. Lord, at the same time, we want to submit ourselves into your caring hand as the pandemic is going on. Lord, we are grateful that you have blessed us with good health. Also, you have arranged all the arrangements in terms of our family responsibilities. Lord, we are grateful for you, grateful to you for all this. And at the same time, we want to plead before you that you pour down your blessings upon your people, upon us, upon our families also, Father, so that in the days to come, we could see your glory more closely. In thy name we pray. Amen. Let us now bring our intercession before the Lord. In our intercession, let us join our prayer for the whole human family with the unceasing prayer of Christ the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the pandemic-affected areas all over the world. We pray for the growing numbers of cases of coronavirus all over the world and especially in India. Once again, we thank you for, blessing, for the blessing of virtual services where we can pray and participate without causing harm and concern to others. Lord, in your mercy, for all who live in the capital city of Delhi and its neighborhood, Noida, Ghaziabad, Faridabad, and Gurugram, for the removal of all that divides us from each other and for true harmony in our country. We pray for removal of crimes against girls and women in Delhi and especially our neighboring states. Lord, in your mercy, for all engaged in agriculture, industry, and commerce, for all workers, skilled and unskilled, and for all those who defend our country, especially the personnel of the armed forces and the allied services. Protect our borders and personnel posted there. We remember the escalating situation with the farmers. We pray for every farmer in India and that in every state they may be allowed to sell their produce as they please without force or coercion. Lord, in your mercy. For teachers and students, scientists, artists and writers, and for all who influence the minds and hearts of others, we pray for the hospitals and the medical centers that they will become true face of service and caregiver. Protect all the elderly persons in our church and nation and all little children who are most vulnerable to this virus due to low immunity. We pray that you would protect people from the third wave of community spreading and further infections and fatalities. We also pray that people will be more careful and responsible and stay indoors, use masks and sanitizers when they do need to go out. We pray for the students who have to write board exams this year. Lord, be with them in their studies and exams. Give them a conducive atmosphere and take the technology in your hand. Let the administration be more sensitive and responsible in taking the right decisions. Lord, in your mercy. For those who are suffering, the poor and hungry, those individuals and institutions that are feeding them, 
the destitute and the oppressed, the unemployed, the sick and the dying, and for all who help them. We pray for those who are sick, Olive Jackson, Shireen Cook, Shirley Gupta, Honey Williams, Gladys Chaudhary, Ponu Thangaraj, Meenu Sharma, Vijay Noel James, Sujata Mathai, Barnabas, Anil Langre, D.S. Prem Kumar, Carol Bed, Albo Jason, Gayatri Samson. Lord, in your mercy. For all to whom authority is entrusted in this and other countries, and especially our President Sri Ramnath Govan, our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, for the Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramana, the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi, Sri Anil Bayajal, the Chief Minister, Sri Arvind Kejriwal, members of our judiciary, and for all those who have power over the people. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the government, help the leaders to govern through acts and policies that are people-oriented and not party-oriented. We pray for uni unity and one accord in our nation. We especially pray for the regions that are affected by various cyclones and tsunamis in India and other nations. Lord, in your mercy, for the unity of all Christian people and for their witness and service in the world. We pray for different dioceses under CNI and other church structures. We pray that every parish member, presbyters, members of the past committee, Sunday school teachers and students, youth fellowship, and WFCS may grow spiritually. Today we pray that our church would continue to stand for the message of redemption initiated in the cross of Christ. We submit every family into your hand and pray that all may be honest and sincere in our repentance and spiritual discipline. We pray for those who have recovered from COVID and other ailments that they would regain their strength and complete health. Lord, in your mercy, for your whole church in our country, for its councils and leaders, we pray especially for Prem Chand, a moderator, Dharmaraj, moderator of the Church of South India, and G. Verghese, Metropolitan of the Marthoma Church, for our Bishop Varis, for Reverend Mohit, Reverend Ratnaraj, and Reverend Abhay, our presbyters, and for all those ministering to us at the altar, and for all other ministers of your church, that they may be faithful in their ministry. Today, we also pray that you would purge the church at the highest levels, so that ministry and faith of our fathers may continue to heal this nation. Lord, in your mercy, that with, that with all your people who have faithfully served you in this life, we may also share in the eternal joy of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray. Hasten, Heavenly Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant these petitions which we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now sing the third hymn from Cathedral Praise, hymn number 185, Come Thou Almighty King, and the lyrics can be found on your screen.
Section 17, The Confession of Sin. Beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ said, The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved by God's grace to keep his commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Let us all join together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who forgive one another and truly repent of their sins, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Shall we join in the peace? We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As our Savior Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. May God the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love and defend you at all times. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. conclude today's service, let us now sing hymn number 387, Take Up Thy Cross. 
analytics can be found on your screens.